Welcome as we pause in this time of reflection and devotion. We do so acknowledging the Ngunnawal, Nambri and Narugu people as the first peoples and traditional custodians in the region now known as Canberra. All of us are familiar with the variety of demands modern life makes upon us and the need to balance commitments and to make choices. It is a reality of life. In the midst of all that competes for our attention, one voice seeks our attention and focus before all else. The voice of Jesus uttering the simple words, follow me. The kingdom will not wait for you or your right time. These words are from a song by a songwriter and Uniting Church minister, Phil Newton, and they really resonated with me as I heard them this week and reflecting upon what I was going to be saying. They're based around the various conversations Jesus had with people who wanted to follow him but also wanted to fulfill other obligations. One such story is the one that we're going to read today from the Gospel according to Luke. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem, and he sent messages ahead of him. On their way they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. But they did not receive him because his face was set towards Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. Then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plough and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. As you listen to these words, you might feel that Jesus is being a bit harsh and uncompromising. Surely these requests seem quite reasonable. Phil told me, that as well as that passage and others like it, he was influenced by Martin Luther King's letter from Birmingham Jail. This letter was written in response to published statements of several white Southern Baptist pastors who agreed with King's aspirations but urged restraint and adherence to the law and letting things take their course of over time. King's letter is an exposition of the urgency of the time and the need for civic reform and racial justice. In his longish letter, King exclaims that the oppressed people cannot remain oppressed. Those who might look for change by increments and wait for the right moment will never be those who take the necessary action for justice, but they will be those overtaken by history. The sentiments of King's letter in many ways reflect the teachings and the ministry of Jesus, of whom King was a follower. I've started with this letter because it offers for us a very specific expression of the themes found in today's passage. Jesus had a really clear understanding of his calling to see the complete reformation of Israel and the world within God's rule of love, justice and peace. It wasn't a matter of incremental change or small modification of society, but the coming in of a completely different reality. 
not the reality of exploitive empires, whether civic or religious, and the hierarchies and inequalities of society that went with such empires. Rather, Jesus proclaimed the vision of God's rule, the vision of the kingdom of God. The phrase at the beginning of today's passage, he set his face towards Jerusalem, expresses something of the focus and determination in which he set forth to see the fulfilment of his calling. His responses to what we might consider quite reasonable requests demonstrate the sense of focus and urgency that participation in the work of the kingdom would demand. The requests submitted relate to factors which would have been seen as at the heart of Jewish society in that time, responsibility to the family and to community. Jesus is not dismissing the validity of the desires. However, he is making very clear that the journey he is setting out upon is the seeking of the realisation of God's way of being and that there is an urgency and a focus to this task which supersedes all other considerations. In our age of balancing demands and responsibilities, we perhaps should pause to consider how these words of Jesus speak to us. I am caused to wonder whether I have too often failed to fully appreciate or respond to the urgency of the gospel call the call for ecological and social justice, to see the creation of a compassionate, fair and inclusive society, and the sharing and the realisation of all creation reconciled within God's grace and love. This call sings out through all creation, calling us to follow in the way of Jesus We focus and hope. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Lead us always on the journey of justice, the ways of compassion to learn. Guide us, O oh God, in the pathways of truth, seeking your peace every turn. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Teach us to see you in friend and in stranger, to know you in those who we meet. May the love that we've known be the love that we show, through us may you touch those we greet. Christ of the road, of tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love, in our lives your life be displayed. Christ be within, before and behind us, Christ to our left and our right. In the twists of the road as we journey this life, be with us by day and by night. Christ of the road, Tears of the broken, Christ of the lost, the betrayed. Be with us in our longing, our hoping, our love. In our lives, your life be displayed. Let's pray. God of love and justice, Jesus calls us to follow him, sharing in his work of the reconciliation of all things in your grace and the realization of your purpose of healing justice and peace for all creation as refugee week comes to its close we pray 
for all displaced from their homes due to violence, persecution, famine and environmental crisis and pray they may find places of welcome and shelter. We pray that we as a nation may be a place of welcome and shelter. We pray for ourselves that we may be inspired by the vision of your rule of love which Jesus your son proclaimed and that in your spirit we might have grace and healing for where we have stumbled, vision and wisdom for where we are unsure and strength and courage for where we are afraid that in and through our lives your purpose for all creation may be realised. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus who we believe to be the way, the truth and the life. Amen. You are the people of God a people whose hope and place rest within the promise of God. A people called to the journey, seeking always the vision received in Christ of all things reconciled and restored in the grace of God. Journey boldly, journey faithfully, knowing the blessing of God who calls us to this journey and who is the path and the destination. Amen.